Hello there, I'm Dylan Shimon. I'm known for working on Dojo over the past 15 plus years. I've been working with JavaScript since the late 90s, and I'm also an avid TypeScript proponent. Currently work on Dojo, I run the Halfstack conferences, and I'm the InfoQ JavaScript and Web Development News Editor. And what I do for InfoQ, which is a tech news site, is I write a lot of content and review a lot of content about what's new with JavaScript and the web ecosystem. And I think it's really important at, in that role to not just cover like what's new with React and what's new with Angular and what's new with Vue and Node, but to cover a wide range of things that are emerging, interesting, different, unusual, and conventional. And in my role as editor, about once a year, we do a trend report, which is essentially a summary of what is innovative, what's getting adopted, what's been fully adopted, and what's kind of lagging behind or no longer actively being used for new projects. And this helps us determine sort of what to focus our news on and um, basically determine what to prioritize because we can't cover everything, but we want to cover as many interesting things as, as possible for our users and to just also help raise awareness for all the amazing things that are being built for the web platform. So this time we've taken our sort of trend report and it used to all fit on one graph, but we've kind of gone a bit crazy this time and that we've covered um, 11 different subcategories. So we have sort of the language and patterns and standards itself. And that sort of covers things like which version of ECMAScript you're using, do you use TypeScript, things like that, to client-side frameworks, server-side frameworks and data APIs, cloud um, computing APIs for web engineers, package management optimization and bundling, web development testing and autom automation, mobile development environments and frameworks such as Electron, IoT, blockchain, machine learning APIs for JavaScript, data visualization and augmented reality and mixed reality and virtual reality for web engineers, CSS in general, and then web development, code editors and IDEs. And these aren't necessarily the most perfect categories, but what they do is they allow us to look at a lot of different things because for example, if you're looking at is something widely adopted and you compare it to like front end frameworks, nothing else comes close, right? So if you're looking at like, what's the most popular machine learning JavaScript API, it's not gonna be used anywhere near as much as say React or Node.js or TypeScript. Or, so it's nice to have these subcategories to filter things out. And it's also good to look at sort of the maturity in the context of those things. So there are some areas where something that's two years old might be a laggard and in another space that might still be an early adopter. It just kind of depends on the growth rate in that space. We've covered, I think, probably more than 100 different projects, tools, and features. We cover WebAssembly and its growth. We cover a lot of interesting APIs. And then we use this to sort of figure out what we're going to report on and, and what we're going to write about. So I wouldn't say there are any particular surprises on this report, other than there are a lot of things that we covered. And it's amazing how many different things there are and how many different options there are to do so many amazing things on the web. And, um, you know, I've been particularly interested lately in some of the IoT type stuff. I recently got this Neurosity um, thing right here, which I'll put on my head for a moment. Probably doing it wrong. I just got it. I haven't really done much with it yet. But what this does is it reads your um, thought pattern, like basically your brainwaves out, you know, the different types of brainwaves, and then lets you do thought computing with it. So my goal eventually is to do this, to think the word bark and make a robotic dog bark, just for fun. But I think there are a lot of interesting use cases that could be done with thought computing. The company that creates this is actually, for example, looking at ways to make it possible to um, like, determine when you're most productive as an engineer and other really interesting use cases. So there's a lot of interesting innovation in the space. Uh, it seems like every day there's something new around WebAssembly. I saw an announcement recently um, about bringing a platform that I thought was dead back to the web with WebAssembly. So there's a lot of really interesting implications and use cases for that. And then really the sort of um, Atwood's law that if something can be built in JavaScript, it likely will be built in JavaScript. It certainly continues to come true and evolve over the years. So I think it's a very exciting time to be a JavaScript developer. It can be a bit daunting or a bit um, fatiguing at times, but we do our best to help you sort of learn about what's interesting. And the way we write on infoq.com is very to the point, news driven, trying to help you know, like, is this something I should care about or not? 
And you can determine that by the, the few paragraphs we start with to tell you what is this thing and why is it useful and what's new about it to help you make an assessment of, well, should I consider something new? Should I use this? Is this worth putting on my radar? Is this something I could learn from? Is this something I would actually use today and so forth? So I hope you enjoy the new report. Uh, we've had a lot of fun putting it together and um, we appreciate your feedback. And I'm sure we've missed a lot of things, but you know, we're do what we can to cover as many different things as possible within reason. So if there's something really important that you think we missed, let us know and we'll hopefully include it next time. Uh, thanks and look forward to hearing from you.